Hello, our topic is the meaning of the planets in the houses. I have gotten requests for this for many years and we're finally doing it. The meanings of the planets in the houses. As you know, in vibrational astrology, we use three house systems, equal houses, midheaven houses, and vertex houses. So for example, here's a chart wheel, happens to be actor Ben Affleck. In one of the house systems that's more common today in modern Western astrology, Placidus houses, which divides each quadrant into three pieces. But if we go to the equal house system, which I'm doing here, then we see that each house is exactly 30 degrees and the midheaven happens to be in the ninth house. It's no longer a cusp. That's one of the three house systems. Another house system is the midheaven houses. And what I want to point out here is that all of these three house systems are equal. This is equal from the midheaven. We use the term equal houses for the equal from the ascendant because that's what it's been called. That's what we all know it by. So we just call this the midheaven houses when we do equal from the midheaven. And of course, the planets may change their house position. So let's see, if I go back to uh, equal houses, let's see, Sun and Mars and Mercury are in the second house using equal. And then when I go to midheaven houses, Mercury is still in the second house and Sun and Mars have moved into the third house. So, of course, some of the planets will change houses. Some may remain in the same house. And then lastly, we have the vertex houses. And now we see that Sun and Mercury are in the third house. Uh, Venus is now in the second house. So things have changed. Mars is now in the fourth house. So the house positions change, of course. So there we go. There we have the equal from the vertex. Notice the ascendant way down here in the second house. So that can happen. And the midheaven's in the 10th house. Sometimes you move over, you know, very far away from the angular cusp. Your ascendant's nowhere near the ascendant in the vertex houses. Okay, so there we have it. Another thing I want to point out is when we do equal from the vertex, the vertex is the seventh house. So it's marking the seventh house. In the midheaven houses, the midheaven marks the tenth house. In the equal houses, the ascendant marks the first house. Okay, uh, I think most of you are probably familiar with that, but those are the three house systems, and they all tell us something a little bit different from each other about the, her about the person. Now, there are many reasons why we use these three house systems, equal, midheaven, and vertex, and uh, they... Frankly, they make more sense than, than any of the quadrant houses, the whole sign houses. I'm not going to discuss that in this video. There's another video called Why We Use Equal Midheaven and Vertex Houses in VA. And you can watch that video for the reasons why we use them. What we're going to do in this video is give the meanings of the planets in the houses. So, what do equal houses tell us? Equal, tell, equal houses tell us how we present ourselves to the world, the impression we want to make, the things that are most important and that we want to communicate to the world. What we're going to see about houses, they're very psychological. They're about attitudes. They're about orientation. You know that aspect patterns and midpoint configurations tell us about the dynamic energy flow within the person and they can really identify specific talents, specific traits. They tend to be more concrete and specific but the houses are more psychological. They're more about an orientation and approach. They may seem a little more vague than the aspect patterns and the midpoint configurations, but that's what they do. That's how they function. So there are some things in astrology that are very psychological, very kind of nebulous if you're trying to pin them down, but they're really not nebulous or weak or vague in the person's life. They're having a big impact on the way the person functions, how they orient themselves to life in general. Okay, so the equal houses is about the impression we want to make. It has a lot to do with our, uh, our identity, how we want to be in the world, what statement we want to make. And the first house in any of these house systems encapsulates the fundamental meaning of the house. 
So if you have a planet in the first house, that planet is very important to you in the impact, the impression, that what you want to communicate, what you want to say, what you want to share, what do you need, want to bring to the world? You know, I may have a particular talent, or you may have a particular talent and motivation. That talent and motivation is something we're going to do because we have it. But it's not necessarily what we think the world needs to hear. What's going on with the world? What do we want to say to everyone around us? That's what the equal houses tell us. And the mid-heaven houses is the attitude and approach to life that is important to you in order to make, uh, in order to bring your deepest talents and abilities out into full expression in your career and daily pursuits. So the Midheaven Houses emphasize the MCIC axis, where the IC is what's deepest, what's most natural, what's most instinctive, and what you simply are without having to think about it. And the mid-heaven houses show how you want to take something within yourself and objectify it, make it visible. All the house systems have this element of sharing and bringing out into the world, into the space around us, into the context, into the environment in which we live. All three house systems are very environmental. They're about our situation within the surroundings that we are in, in the space that we occupy, and within the people and places and things around us. Equal Houses is simply relating. What do I want to say? What do I want to represent? Mid-Heaven Houses, what do I want to bring out? What do I want to bring up into the world? What do I want to represent? So the Mid-Heaven Houses are related to career. But they're re related to career in the sense of what role do I want to play? What thing do I want to bring out and have recognized? Bring out into the world. So it has a lot to do with career in terms of the things that are important to you to say and make and have impact to others. And the vertex houses combine some of the meaning of the equal and some of the meaning of the midheaven. Vertex houses are how we choose colleagues, associates, and acquaintances. Those are key words for the vertex houses. They're about your co-workers. They're about people that provide things to you for your work, for whatever you do, your suppliers, things you purchase, um, customers even. All of your contacts, all of the people that make your midheaven activities possible. So it's combining the emphasis on relating to others and what impact you have with what you bring out into the world. So the vertex houses are about how you navigate through life and achieve success within the context of all activities, having direct or indirect involvement with others. It's your colleagues, your associates, your acquaintances. The equal houses do not have an ulterior motive. Equal houses are simply about what you want to say, communicate, and present to others. Equal houses are interested in other people and how you relate to other people and situations just for the sake of relating nothing else involved. Vertex houses are more utilitarian, more practical, and it's interested in other people and situations as it relates to how we navigate through life. Anything we want to bring out into the world, anything we, any official capacity we have in the world is going to always involve the environment, the context, the opportunities, the obstacles, the people and the situations that either help or hinder our ability to do that. So those are the three houses. And now let's do it. We're going to talk about each planet in each house. I'm going to describe what the sun in the first house means according to all three house systems. Uh, and then we'll do the moon and so on. So we're going to go, um, let's see, no, after first, I'm going to go through all 12 houses with the sun. So let's see what sun in the first house means in the equal house system. So the sun in the first house in the equal house system means a need to have clarity and presence. If you have sun in the first house, 
you are very sensitive about being put in a group and not having a queer identity or name or having your whole identity wrapped up in a collective, you know, being labeled according to what group you're with, you or you don't want to float through life. You don't want to just hang out. So you want to understand what's going on. You want to take it in and you want to respond clearly and, and crisply to have a clear presence. You don't want to be forgetful. You don't want to be inattentive. You want to express yourself clearly as an individual with integrity. You want to have a queer identity and place in the world. Why? Is it ego? No, not exactly. It's simply that we're here on earth. There's all these people around us. And what are we going to do about it? Let's get a position. Let's get a perspective. It's like somebody saying, let me get, you know, binoculars or something and get a clear view. Let me understand where I'm situated. Where I, what spot have I taken up and what am I saying and what am I doing? It's bringing a strong presence of mind and character to the situation. Okay, uh, now midheaven houses. What does sun in the first house by midheaven houses mean? It means the need to develop the skills and awareness that are essential to you in order to pursue a career that expresses what is most important to you. Your no-nonsense direct approach to developing the skills, assets, and lifestyle needed to have a meaningful career inclines you to succeed in achieving your goals. So people with sun in the first house, but with mid-heaven houses, they have a clear sense of where they want to be in life. It's important to them. What do they want to make of themselves? What do they want to present to the world? How are they going to get there? And they make clear and decisive decisions to achieve it. If forced to pursue a career that is not suitable for you, you are likely to feel unsatisfied and unwilling to continue living in this way, and eventually you do what needs to be done to be engaged in meaningful pursuits. Sun in the first house demands that the person be able to make a contribution, to, be, to have a position, to have a placement, to have some respect, to have some honor, to have some responsibility. Son in the first house demands that of life. It will not tolerate anything less. If it does begin to tolerate it because of lack of confidence or whatever reason, uh, the person starts to become depressed uh, or unmotivated. They become very, uh, they lose their enthusiasm. They lose their, their spirit. They lose their uh, in excitement for anything. They just kind of fade away. It's a vitally important for son in the first house to find its position in life. Uh, and often it's it's something, you know, a teacher, a doctor, a nurse, a lawyer, a, you know, it could be anything, any kind of position. It could be a secretary. It could be somebody working in a laboratory. But the, it's, a, it's a feeling that you are making a contribution, that you've found a place to be, to bring something that's important uh, uh, to you into the world and you have a role in life. Son in the first house needs to have that role in life. Son in the, in the first house by vertex houses a strong motivation to bring people together who can assist each other in achieving a, mi a mission. So with son in the first house, there's an interest in building strong partnerships and teams People with sun in the first house by vertex houses are team players. They are often have leadership ability. And if they're not leaders, they are great team players. They work together well to achieve the goals that are important to everyone. They understand the importance of their colleagues, their assistants. Uh, they, uh, they like to provide people who, who need services find each other and benefit from each other. So they bring their matchmakers, they bring people together. Son in the first house says, we need teamwork, we need cooperation, and we need communication between the providers of a service and the people that receive the service. You often see people with son in the first house 
are messengers who bring things together. Even though we associate Mercury with the messenger, when sun is in the first house by vertex houses, the person is connecting people to the work that needs to be done. So it finds the right partnerships and associations and relationships uh, to, to, to achieve something. Very, very important. When the sun is in the first house in one of these house systems, it means it's the fundamental primary orientation to life that needs to be fulfilled in order for the person to feel good about life and about, about where they are in the world. Moon in the first house by equal house system. If you have moon in the first house by equal house system, you have a need to be sensitive to the habits, customs, and traditions of other people. Feeling the importance of heritage and what the long history that makes our current lives possible. So with moon in the first house, there's a sensitivity to, your, to the background of people, to the history, to the ways that things are the ways that things were that brought us to our current situation. So it's an interest in the family, the heritage, the habits, the uh, customs that have been passed on and that, and that have formed the background to the person's life. So Moon in the first house is very aware of the values, the philosophy, the way of thinking that comes from whatever world we are born into, whatever country, whatever family, and that forms a framework for our soul, for our depth of feeling. The moon is very, very interested in this and the importance of it. Sometimes the moon in the first house takes an interest in things like uh, child abuse or broken homes or uh, people who are underprivileged and don't have opportunities. Things like this. They want to build a soulful, healthy um, background, support system. They're aware that we all need a rich support system that guides us through life. This is what Moon in the First House is interested in. Now, moon in the first house by the midheaven house system means that in any training, learning, or working situation, you, if you have moon in the first house, using the midheaven house system, you are inclined to be a good listener and to deeply appreciate the traditions and history that enrich the situation you are in. This appreciation helps you succeed in your pursuits. So you find that people have moon in the first house by midheaven houses are listening. They're appreciating the history. They're appreciating what makes something possible. They appreciate that things don't just fall out of trees, as we say. You know, that whatever they have, that there's a long history behind that. You know, suppose you have a musical instrument. A lot of us get the musical instrument as children, and we say, oh, wow, this is cool. Moon in the first house with Midheaven House Systems is like, Wow, I have this instrument because of the history and the, the efforts and the lineage that's gone on before me. And then I'm born into this fabric. I'm born into this matrix that's developed over long periods of time. And there's always an intuitive sense of it. The person doesn't necessarily articulate it this way. But this is what's happening. Moon in the first house appreciation for the history, the soul, the depth of feeling that has made possible what we're doing and the deep history behind what we do. It goes back many, many generations. Uh, all of our, uh, all of the things we do are, are built on a long history and depth and a, all of the habits and traditions that have developed to make these things strong in our lives. Moon in the first house by vertex house system means a deep appreciation of how traditions and customs are in place that enable people to develop strong and effective partnerships, families, and communities that meet everyone's needs. So moon in the first house and vertex house system is very interested in family structure. It's very interested in the workplace structure. 
How does our work environment, and how does our home environment, and how does our community environment affect our ability to work together and build a strong life together? So you'll find that moon in the first house, using ver the vertex house system, the person is very interested in what the opportunities are, what uh, doors are open for people. It's very interested in what preparation we're given so that we can take our place in the world. So these are the kinds of things that Moon in the first house is interested in. Remember, the vertex houses are always interested in colleagues, associates. So with Moon in the first house, it's interested in how has our culture, how has our nation, how has our community developed? What's the history of it? What has brought us to this point? And is it enabling us to build a strong, effective, and healthy life where we can achieve things because we have good, positive traditions? So wherever there are negative traditions, you know, abuse, violence, drug use, these habits that are passed on, for generation to generation, the effects of trauma for going back many generations. Moon in the first house and vertex house system, very sensitive to, to it, very aware of it, very interested in, in gradually. It can't be done overnight, sometimes it cannot even be done in one generation. But within a few generations, you can t change the tide for everyone. And immediately you can start changing it for one person at a time, changing things for the better to build healthy, positive traditions that enable people to take their place in the world. So if we look at, you know, again, let's look at Ben Affleck's chart, and we look at, um, let's go to house system, equal houses, with sun, he has nothing in the first house but equal houses, but his sun, Mercury, and Mars are in the second house. So we will soon, probably in the next video in this series, be talking about um, the planets in the second house, and that would apply to Ben Affleck. But if we go to, just to use one more example, let's go over to his vertex houses. Look how different it is. In vertex houses, you have Sun and Mercury in the third, Mars in the fourth. So all of these things go on. Um, and that's why interpretation of houses has been kind of confusing where people can't agree on what house system to use because there's, it's actually fairly complex. You can have, it's complex in the sense that your son is in one house with one house system, it's in another house in the other house system. Well, it's less complex than being confused or vague about what's going on. We can see exactly the way the person functions in different ways in different contexts. Okay, so that is sun and moon in the first house by the first three house systems. We're at 23 minutes. I'm going to stop here and start the next video with Mercury in the first house. So we'll cover several planets in each video until we finish all of the planets and all of the houses. This will probably take a lot of videos to cover all of this. Okay, my friends, thank you very much for listening. God bless. Namaste.